Hi everyone and welcome to a Fraser Public Library database tutorial. If this is the first time you're joining us, my name is Kristen Getzen and I am the Programming and Youth Services Librarian here at Fraser Public Library. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to walk you through two different systems, two different database systems that actually utilize the same underlying software. And these are OverDrive and Libby. Now, this may seem pretty confusing, but it doesn't matter which system you choose, both are going to get you what you want. If you are going to access the system on your computer, you will need to access OverDrive. If you're going to access the system on either your phone or a tablet, you can either choose OverDrive or Libby. Those are both applications you can download from either the Apple Store or from the Google Play Store. So first I'm going to take you through what you're going to see on OverDrive in your computer. And then I'm actually going to switch cameras so that you can see what I'm doing on my tablet and I can show you what happens on my tablet. All right, so I'm going to start sharing my screen so that you can see what I'm doing here. Alrighty, so you'll notice that this is our home page. This is the Fraser Public Library homepage. This is what you're going to see when you first come to FraserPublicLibrary.org. And up at the top, there are some tabs that have some drop down resource menus. So I'm going to hover over resources and in the drop down menu, I'm going to select databases. This is where you're going to find all of our databases that you might want to access. So I'm going to click on that and a new page is going to pop up. This is going to show me where all of my databases are. So when you're looking for downloading ebooks, e audiobooks, or video files, OverDrive really is your best bet. And it's the database I use most frequently, truthfully. So I'm going to select O for OverDrive because this is what I'm going to have access on on my computer. And here is our OverDrive database. I'm going to click on this. If you would rather do databases by subject, you can feel free and do that too. I prefer the actual alphabetical subjects. It's easier for me to, to find what I'm looking for. All right, so when you get to this page, you're going to see a lot of different things. And there's a lot of information on here. So we're going to unpack this as we go. Up at the top in the left hand corner, you're going to see Suburban Library Cooperative Media Download Center. The Fraser Public Library is a part of a cooperative of like minded small libraries that are in the suburban Detroit area. And that means that we actually share a lot of resources and part of that is our OverDrive account. So this is noting that you're a part of the Suburban Library Cooperative. This means that there are more books that we have access to that other libraries would have purchased that you can actually download, which is wonderful. Right below that is subjects, collections, Kindle books, kids, and teens. Now these are all ways of searching for things in OverDrive. And I'll cover that in a little bit. On the right hand side, you're going to see a search bar. So this little magnifying glass is where you can search for something. A notifications icon. So if you have notifications you need to know, this is where you're going to see a little pop up. Your bookshelf and my account. I already signed in via my library card on here, but if this is the first time you're accessing OverDrive, there's going to be a little pop up over here that says, please log in with your library card to access the full collection of titles. So make sure you do that. Once you do, it will remember your library card number. So if I click on my account, it's actually all of the things that I have access to. I have my loans that I've taken out, my holds, so those books that I have on hold right now, a wish list of items, and I'll show you how to do that, any titles I've rated, the history of the items I've checked out, and settings. And of course, I can sign out. Now, what I'm going to do is underneath this top area, you'll notice this just added section. This is a collection that has been curated by either a librarian or by OverDrive itself. So this is a collection of books that were just added to the system. Let's look at one of these titles a little bit closer. You're going to notice right here, this is the artwork that is on the front of a book. 
So this is what the front of the book would actually look like. Below that, Dance Away With Me is the title of the book by Susan Elizabeth Phillips is the author. We can tell it's an ebook because it tells us so. It's an ebook. I can place a hold on this book. Right next to that is a little bookmark with a little plus sign, and I'll explain what that does in a little bit. And above that are three dots. And you'll notice up at the very top is a little white thing that says waitlist. All right, so if a book has already been checked out, all of the copies of the book have been checked out, there are no copies available, that means that you would need to go on a wait list for this title. To do that, you can either click the wait list, which will take you to the title to learn more information about it, or you can click place a hold. Okay, let's say I want to know more information about this title. I'm going to click this and it's going to take me to this specific title. Okay, I can tell it's a novel. It tells me so. It's an ebook. I can rate it. So I can do a star rating. It looks like we have zero of one copy available and the wait time is pretty long because we only have one copy available. But I can place a hold on it. I can also read a sample of it if I'm not sure if I'm going to like it. I can add it to my wish list. So that's what this little bookmark with a plus sign means, is if you want to add this book to your wish list, you don't want to read it quite yet, but you know you're interested in reading it, you can put it on a wish list to save for later. It also has a description of the book, details about the book, reviews, and then below this, any other books you may also like. Okay, so let's go back. If you hit Suburban Library Cooperative at the top, it actually takes you back to that main um, landing page. So this was the title we were just looking at. We can actually see all of those features from here as well. This little bookmark with the plus is the wish list. The little three dots, if we click on that, that actually brings us to those other things that we couldn't see, the read a sample, the view the details, add it to a history, and also seeing other books that you may also like if you're interested in this book. Let's say you're interested in just Susan Elizabeth Phillips. You just want to see books by her. If I click on her name, it actually pulls all of the books by Susan Elizabeth Phillips into a little tab for me so that I can see all of the books in the Suburban Library Cooperatives Media Center that are by Susan Elizabeth Phillips. And this includes audiobooks and ebooks. All right, I'm going to head back because I'm going to scroll down just a little bit and you'll notice that under this curated collection, we have a lot of books that are actually available for us to check out. We know because there's a little blue bar at the top of the book that says available. All right, let's say I want to read Becoming by Michelle Obama. So I can borrow this book. If I click the borrow button, it's going to bring me to a little tab that'll say, how long do I want to borrow this for? This pop-up screen is going to tell you, you can either borrow it for seven days, 14 days, or 21 days. If you know you're gonna to get to the book really soon, maybe you borrow it for seven days. If you know it's gonna take you a while, maybe you borrow it for 21. Once, you've once you choose how long you wanna borrow it for, you're gonna hit borrow. And what that's gonna do is this actually brings me to another screen that says, I can now read this with a Kindle, I can read it in a browser, or I can download an EPUB ebook. All right, well, an EPUB ebook needs a specific version of Adobe Acrobat to read. If you download this and you don't actually have it on your computer, it'll prompt you to download the Adobe Acrobat edition. You can read this in a browser or you can download it to your Kindle if you so desire. Well, let's say I wanna read it in a browser. I'm gonna click on this and it's gonna open a new tab for me that is going to show the book. All right, if I click on that, like just in the middle, it shows me how long I have to read and I'm at 0%, I'm on the cover. If you go to where your little hand is a full hand, that'll turn your page. So I'm gonna turn my pages until I get to where I want to go. Oh, those are adorable pictures. Oh, those are so cute. All right, anyway. So that is how you would borrow a book. Now let's say you want to find a book. 
you have no idea what you're looking for. So we're going to go to subjects. Subjects are going to be books that are in a subject category or audiobooks. Let's say you want to do an audiobook. All right, so let's find an audiobook. We want something that is going to be funny because I don't know about you, but I could use a laugh. So I'm going to look for audiobooks that are funny. All right, so I clicked on the humor category, and you'll notice that a lot of these have actually been checked out, but that's okay. I want to borrow this one. So I'm going to borrow this, and I only want it for seven days. I'm going to hit borrow. All right, and I'm going to download that using my tablet, and I'll show you how to do that in a little bit. If we go to collections, these are special collections that have been gathered together. So we have the kids and teens. So these are collections of teens and kids books that we have gathered specifically for them and makes it a little easier for them to navigate our menus. The ebooks collections that you may be interested in reading and our audiobook collections that you may be interested in listening to. If we go under Kindle books, that's where any and all Kindle books live. So any that have a Kindle book edition that you can download. Kids will take us to our kids collection. And to get back, we go back to the main collection. And then teens would get us to our teens collection. Now, let's say we have a specific author we really want to read. So let's say I want to read a book by Charlene Harris. Okay, she's the first author I could think of. So I notice as I start typing, it's coming up with different categories. So Charlene Harris, and there's quite a few books by her, but the one I want is actually, it's already checked out. So I'm going to place a hold on it. So it tells me that I am number one on one copy of that specific book. So it'll alert me when that specific book becomes available. All right, so I'm going to go into my account so that you can actually see what we have in here. Notice how I have loans. If I go into loans, that tells me what books I currently have on loan. Okay. It also tells me what books I have on hold. See the dead in the family. And any books I have on a wish list. I don't currently have anything on a wish list because I took off that one that I had. All right. Now, I'm actually going to switch so that you can see my tablet. Overdrive and Libby are both available as a downloadable application. So I'm going to open up my tablet and share that screen. There we go. All right, so here's my hand. All righty. So this is what my tablet interface looks like. I have an Android, so if you have an i tablet, iPad or something like that, then it's going to look a little differently. Um, same basic layout. So I have several different things that I can do here. My overdrive is actually this little O icon right here. I've already downloaded it. And my Libby is this little person with their head over a book and it says Libby. Okay, I also have a Kindle that I can also read books on. All right, so let's go to Overdrive. Now, when Overdrive pops up, it's going to take you to this home landing page as well. And what this has is this is your bookshelf. This is where all of the books that you've borrowed are located. If you click on one of those books, so let's say I click on Anne of Green Gables, it's going to open the book for you. Now, You'll notice that this is a little bit of a different color than my white desk. And that's because I don't actually enjoy really white words, but I can change that. Let's say my eyes are getting a little tired. If I just click on the page, it brings up where I am in the book. And it also brings up a few other things. You'll notice the little gear up at top. This is going to do something. This drops down a menu that has brightness, color scheme, font size, font style, and other things. All right, so let's play with the color scheme. Hopefully you can read that. 
And right now I have it on sepia tone, but let's say sepia tone is not what you want to do. Let's say you want it a little brighter. I switched it today. So this is white background with black text. If that's too harsh on your eyes, sometimes people prefer the night. And that is black background with white text. It's a very high contrast, so if you have a hard time reading things, you might like this best. Additionally, if you have a hard time reading things, you can also play with the font size. So I have it kind of on a medium font, but let's say my eyes are really tired and I want it really, really big, okay? I can always increase the font size, which makes it very much easier to read. If I don't like the font style, I can also change what font this is in. Right now I have it in serif, but let's say I'm not liking serif. I want something a little bolder. I wanna do mono space bold, which completely changes the font of the book. Okay, all right. I can also change the orientation. I like my device in portrait mode, which means that you hold it like this. But some people like their device in landscape, which means you hold it like this. I currently have it so that when I change my orientation, it changes the layout of my book. But you don't have to do that. You can lock that if you want, or you can make it so that it shows two pages. So that would be changing the orientation to landscape. And that completely changes it to a landscape device. Okay. Like that. Sorry, I forgot that you weren't in person and that we're doing things via Zoom. <laughs> so I was trying to show it off to my camera here and not the camera up there. Uh, yes, what can I say? All right, so I'm going to change that back because that would drive me nuts. All right. I'm also going to change everything back to the way it was so that I can show you something else. Alrighty, so once you're done changing it to the way you like it, I like it sepia tones and I want my serif back because that's an easy one for me to read. And let's say you want to go to another book. You're done reading Anne of Green Gables. You're, you're bored with it. So you want to switch to something else. If you push on the screen and then you go to this little arrow right up here, this is, nope, 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 nope. It's because I'm pushing in the edge. This is gonna take you back to your bookshelf. So these are all of the books that I currently have downloaded. Let's say I wanna add a new title to this. If you notice, there's this little plus add a title button. You're going to go in here and push that and it'll take you to the Suburban Library Cooperative page for this app. Now, notice how things look very similar to how they did on the computer. We have the Susan Elizabeth Phillips, Dance Away With Me. We have the title underneath, her name. Then it says ebook. Then it says place a hold. We have the little wish list. We have the three dots, which bring up our little menu of items. And then with the wait list up at the top. Okay. The only thing that's different is that you'll notice that we only have the search up here and then we have a uh, three dashed lines. That three dashed lines is actually going to take you to all of the other selections that are up the top when you're on a computer web page. So I have a lot of books that are currently in my account that I haven't downloaded. So I'm going to go to my account and I'm going to go to loans. And I have books that I haven't downloaded yet because I was looking at them on the computer. So I'm going to go to download this book and I want it specifically in an ebook format, EPUB ebook, because that's what puts it in my bookshelf. Now to see the items in your bookshelf, you're gonna go over to this little three dash line up here and that'll take you to your main overdrive menu. Okay, and you'll notice it says manage libraries, bookshelf, account, settings. I'm gonna go to bookshelf and look, that book got added there. Now, if I open this book, you'll notice that all of my settings that I chose during Anna Green Gables stays. I have it sepia toned, it's in serif font, it's the same size. And so I can read this way 
for all of my books. So you don't have to change that for every single book you download. You just got to change it once. All right. Alrighty. So let's say I want to download something from a different library. Let's say I'm a part of two libraries. I'm at a university library and I'm at a public library because I'm taking classes and I'm also, you know, a public citizen. So if you go under manage libraries, so you go to your main overdrive menu, you hit manage libraries, you can choose what libraries you have access to. To add a library, you would push the little plus sign up in the right hand corner. So I'm going to plus and I'm going to browse for a library or you can search. So I'm in the United States. I am in Michigan. And I'm going to add Fraser Public Library. There it is. Okay. Part of the Suburban Library Cooperative. It says select a star to save a library. All right. Well, I want to save the Suburban Library Cooperative. Once you select it, it'll take you to that library's home landing page for OverDrive. Okay. I'm going to actually back out of OverDrive so that we can go into Libby. Oh, no, wait. I'm first going to show you how to download a Kindle book. Okay. I forgot to do that. Sorry. So let's go back to my account and my loans because I have a few that uh, prefer Kindle. For example, a bone to pick, I can also download in Kindle or the Michelle Obama Becoming. So let's download the Michelle Obama Becoming Read Now in Kindle. What that does is that's going to put all of your information in to your Amazon thing. I'm going to sign in, hold on. I don't want you to see my password. Okay, and so that takes you to your Amazon Kindle page. So if you click get library book, it'll download it to your Kindle app. Okay, so my Kindle app is on my home screen and it's this little person reading right down here. This is the Kindle app. If I click this, what it's going to do is it's opening up my Kindle library and I can download Becoming. And that puts it on my actual Android device or tablet or phone, etc. All right. Let's say I have that audiobook that I want to download. All right, let's go back, go back, go back. There we go. I have the Letterman Funny Humorous going to download that. And that was added to my bookshelf. So if I go to my bookshelf, you'll notice that it's right there. If I click on it, it'll open the first of it was actually 10 different files. So it downloads 10 different files to your your device. I'm going to head back because it'll show me it's downloaded three of 10 right now. All right, so now we're going to open Libby. Libby is basically the same thing. It just uses a different graphical interface. It makes it a little bit easier for some people to utilize. Okay, so I'm going to go to library. When you first open Libby for the first time, it's going to show you this screen. I, I was doing another tutorial earlier, so I had to back up a little bit, sorry. And you'll notice that it looks very similar to our overdrive but it also gives you a few prompts. So if you have a Kindle device or a Kindle application on your, your tablet or your phone, it'll ask you if you prefer to read with that. If you do, then you can click yes. And then it looks like you have certain things that it'll tell you. Like I have two books downloaded in Libby for offline access. So I don't have to be connected to the internet to be able to read those books. Alrighty, let's say I want to go preferences. Preferences will show you any specific preferences you're looking for. 
if there's any language preferences you have. In this case, I can't really read other languages. I just read English because, yes, I'm a stupid American. Um, so I will prefer English format because it's easier for me. Um, if I prefer formatting one specifically, like books or audiobooks, if you want compatibility, availability, let's say I don't want everything, I only want things that are available right now, I'm going to apply those preferences across the board. If I hit explore up at the top, it's going to have you explore different subjects or collections. So let's try what's new. I want new in books. And so it's going to show me all of the new books that we have. Now, this is a little bit different information and the way that it appears is a bit different than OverDrive and I'll explain. So up, up at the very top of this book, you'll notice that there are stars. That's the star rating that other people have put. Underneath that is the title. Under that is the actual cover page of the book or the cover. Right next to that is borrow, read a sample, tag, and then up right here is a little plus in a little circle. The plus in the circle means that you can borrow it as well as the borrow. You can click either borrow or the little plus in the circle to be able to borrow it. Once you have your library card input, it will automatically bring up your library card so that you can click borrow. Let's say I don't want to borrow that. Let's see what I want is something, something different, something that someone already has out. Well, apparently all of this is stuff that everybody hasn't checked out yet. So I'm going to go back. And do mystery and thriller. Hmm. We have marriage thrillers. Oh, let's do court. Okay, so that's 50 titles. That's a lot of titles. All right, let's say I want to read this book. See the little calendar? Calendar means that you have to put it on hold. It will tell you about how long you have before someone releases that title. So in this case, about two weeks. There's one copy in use, but no one else is on the wait list yet. So that gives you an indication that if you put your hold on it, you may be getting it fairly soon. So you can either click on that or click place hold to get a hold on the book. Read sample does the same thing as it does in OverDrive and you can read a sample of the book, okay? Like that. If you want to see what is on, ooh, there we go. If you want to see what is on your shelf. So unlike OverDrive, your shelf is actually down here at the bottom. If you click shelf, it's going to take you to all of the things that you have on your shelf right now, including anything you're reading right now. So that sample that I was reading, it says I'm reading it right now. It'll show me recent loans and recent returns. So anything that I've returned recently. All right, up here at the very top, you'll see this little icon. This is your help menu. This is if you get lost and you don't know what you're doing or you need help. And then let's say, oh, if I go back to shelf, you'll also notice loans, holds, and tags. If I have a hold on something, I can click that and it shows me what my hold is on. And again, this uses the same system and software as OverDrive. So I put this on hold in OverDrive, but notice how it's showing up in Libby um, because it's the same thing. Or what loans I have right now and any tags that I am looking for. So like sci-fi, fantasy, marriage, murders, who knows. All right. And this is how you are going to use OverDrive and Libby. If you have any questions, please feel free and contact me at Fraser Public Library. I'm going to stop sharing my screen right now and wish you all a happy afternoon. And I will see you all later for another database tutorial. All right. Bye.